Hello, everyone. Welcome to Achieving Success with Olivia Akin. I'm your host, Olivia Akin. Each week, we will discuss the roadmap of achieving your personal and professional success. We will give you real life stories on growing personally and professionally to achieve your life and career goals with the help of some top notch guests. Today, we are speaking with Janine Stella. Janine is the founder of Stella Mix Production Company. Janine is also the host of Goals and Stilettos podcast powered by Fight Mixer TV. You can find Janine by going to her website at stellamix.com or by emailing her at info at stellamix.com. Hello, Janine. It's fantastic having you on the show. Hello, Olivia. Good morning. And thank you so much for having me on. It's a beautiful Friday. I know. I love it. To start off the show, can you tell me what success means and looks like to Janine Stella? That's a really great question. And I think success is different for everyone. And I've learned the older I've I've become is that honestly, waking up in the morning, looking outside my window in sunny South Florida with a view of my beautiful lake with my dogs and my cat and my tranquil home is is success to me because that means more to me with mental health than anything. So to me, that's a success. That's my safe space. I, no matter what happens in the day, I go home to my Zen and that's success to me. And I think that brings up a very important aspect of a lot of people can deem success in a lot of different ways, like you said. But there's a lot of things that happen in the day. So as long as you can centralize yourself, center yourself, and make sure you have those key aspects that are important to you, you can be very successful. And what happens in the day can kind of shrug off and you can have your peace of mind. Janine, how did you get into the production aspect of podcasts? And what led you to start your own company providing podcasts and helping other podcasters? So back in 2020, like right before the pandemic hit, I had a radio show that was also a podcast. It was called SoFlo SaaS, and it highlighted South Florida business communities. And I started it literally in January of 2020. So we all know what happened March of 2020. So everything, the world shut down. And I thought, you know what? If everyone's stuck at home, they're going to watch me. So I might as well just keep doing it. So I kind of got a knack for it and really loved it, loved the whole thing. And during the uh, the pandemic, when everything shut down, a friend of mine, a dear friend reached out and said, Janine, I need your help. Can you and your co-host come down to Miami and be the press and interview fighters for an MMA fight? Because since it's COVID, their family and their friends are not allowed to attend their event because everything shut down. And at that time, you needed a COVID test uh, to test negative before you could even step foot anywhere. So I said, absolutely, we'll drive down there. We'll get tested. You had to test 24 hours before. And lo and behold, I'm in this arena where I've never been before. And I thought, this is kind of cool. And I interviewed fighters uh, after their weigh-in. After the fight, I kind of stayed through a 24-hour period and got the gist of it. And then it just stuck. And then I got immersed in the fight game. And I just love it. And so that's really how I got started in podcasting. Then a couple years later, I, after producing my own show, I thought, you know what? I really want to get into helping others. So started doing that and then really kicked off my own company a couple of months back and I'm just all in. I'm all in. I'm helping people. I love what I do. And it's extremely rewarding to create something with someone's vision and really see it come to fruition. And I think that is a unique aspect to understand something from both sides of the spectrum. Owning your company providing the services you provide, but then also being able to say, I do it too. So I can understand it. I can understand the struggles you're going through. I can understand some of those hiccups where they might lie. And let's let me help you kind of get past that is 
a very nice thing to know as a client walking in the door of, okay, I'm not just going into another business. I'm going into a business where someone really understands what I'm going through every day. Absolutely. And and there's so many right and wrong things to do that I wish someone had taught me when I started podcasting. Because when I started, let's say, for example, it was kind of sweeping the West Coast of the country of the U.S. years prior to when it hit the East Coast. So by the time it hit the East Coast, people were interested. But when I started, people had no idea what a podcast was. They Half the people I talked to still don't. They're like, what is that? Is that like a radio show? Where do I find it? People just don't know what they don't know. So I love educating people and explaining to them what it actually is, helping them through the process and showing them where they can find their own show, (laughs) which you think would be simple. But for a lot of people, they just they just don't know. It's a new it's a new thing for a lot of people. Janine, prior to going into podcasting, you worked on the television side of things. What was that like and what is the transition been like from going from the TV side to podcast? What are those similarities and differences you've had to kind of work out through your process? I think that television production, I am so blessed to have had that background because in television production, when I'm calling companies on behalf of of the uh, the television show that I was working on when I worked on several different ones. Part of our process is professionalism and setting the intention, follow up, scheduling appointments, and making sure that people are on a Zoom at a proper time, people are on a phone call at a specific time. So it set the pace for podcasting because I have to set up the guests. I have to make sure they're they're on at a certain time. I have to make sure everyone's prepped for the call. So for me, it was kind of seamless. And I'm blessed that I had the opportunity to work on TV because I think it really paved the way for what was to come. And I think that's a key point in understanding that something you do today, whether you know it or not, can really set you up for success down the road, right? So owning your own production company and doing podcasts probably if I asked you 10 years ago, was not something that was on your radar. And but those skills and those tools that you gained through television when you decided to go into that realm has really helped you. And it's probably helped in understanding how things work as well. Janine, you also host your own podcast, um, Skulls and Stilettos. How has that been, you touched upon it a little bit ago of the MMA fighters. What is that like? And what is the mindset you go into and those experiences when you're talking to fighters and you're in that environment? I think it, it's changed and evolved over the last few years because I, I think in the beginning, I want I didn't know anything about the sport. So here I was, this woman with the microphone where men were bloody and sweaty and they just got out of the octagon and they were like, who are you? What do you want to talk to me about? And I was so nervous because I felt like I had to know everything about them, their stats, where they were, where they came from, what weight class they were. And I felt like I had pressure to know everything about them before I interviewed them. And then I just got a style of going, you know what? Everyone else is doing that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be like every other person interviewing an MMA fighter. I want to ask them what got them into fighting, why they do what they do. You know, do they have a family? What country do they come from? What are the things in their life they've they've had to go through in order to get where they're at? And that to me seemed more interesting. So that's why I named my podcast Skulls and Stilettos, which has nothing to do with Skulls and Stilettos. It's a metaphor from really getting to know someone from head to toe. And for me, I like the meat and potatoes of a human being. I like to know what they're about, if I even like them as a person. I don't even know them as a person. You know, you can look at stats on a piece of paper and a roster to tell you X, Y, and Z about someone. But really, that means nothing unless you have a connection with them. So that, to me, seemed like where I was going with with the podcast. 
And I think that's really important to understand and to kind of think about. And you see that, especially in MMA fighting, you know, you're rooting for someone to win, but at the end of the day, you really only know them from when they're in the octagon. You don't hear those stories and that information and feel like you could connect to the fighters in a way that you might get with the NFL or, you know, other sports. But you also see that translate into other sports. And I was recently having a conversation with an MLB player and he didn't want to do interviews. And I was like, do you understand your fan base is going to follow you based on having that connection with you? Connections in today's world are so important. And Janine, something you touched upon, I really connect with is getting to know someone on a personal level. Janine and I work together. Part of Janine's business is helping podcasters get sponsorships. So she helps me get sponsorships and kind of navigate different avenues. What is it about that part of the business that really elevates you to want to help individuals in that area? Not just, hey, we can produce a show, but there's that management side. Your company really helps podcasting on that management side as well? And why was that so important? It's important to me. And I'll, I'll tell you why I've watched, and it really goes back to the fighters that I interview. If I look at a lot of the, the fight game, that's what we call it, the fight game. And we look at the fighters, a lot of them have management, poor management and people that take advantage of them, take their money. They get pennies for what they do. They're taken advantage of on a daily basis. They're trying to feed their family. And I thought, and I'm something else that I'm I'm working on as well, another project. So I thought to myself, a lot of people do podcasts and they don't know how to make money. They they want to monetize it. They they don't know how. Uh, there's a million different courses and things that you could do to learn the process. And I'm relatively new at helping others, but I know how to find money. And so because I knew how to find money in television production, it's very seamless for me to pick up the phone, call a corporation, get to the decision maker and make my pitch. And I thought, let me use my skills in that and just translate it over into into podcasting. So I really want to help excellent podcasters excel, have great guests and and monetize and and have another source of, of revenue and income. Janine, one other thing, I'm going to circle back to this because I think it's really important in service industries or in any type of business you might be in is building relationships. One thing you and I did in the beginning, and we joke now that we're best friends, um, <laughs> but we we've built that relationship with each other. And for me, when I work with individuals, I want to get to know them on a personal level. I want them to feel like they've an ally, whether they're an employee of mine, we work together, or we're, you know, maybe doing an event together and co-sharing the responsibilities. I want individuals to feel like, yeah, you can count on her, but she's going to keep it real. And, you know, there's that relationship of it's not a contract today, and then we're never going to speak again. It's, okay, if I need help on something, I know this person's here, but they also trust me enough and understand me enough to say, hey, something's off today. Are you okay? Or do you need support in other areas that might not be business related or just checking in? For you, what is that important? And how do you go about it? I think that's, I think that's a great topic. And the reason I say that is people do business with people, you know, they know, like, and trust. That's a cliche, but it's so true. If I know someone and I know that they understand how my brain works and I want to know, I want to know them, I might find that I don't like them. And you know what? I'm a total empath. So for me, if I don't like someone, I don't want to work with them and I don't have to work with them as a business owner. I want to work with people that are towards a common goal. They want to succeed in whatever that looks like for them. They want to achieve that success that that I love the name of your podcast because it, it, it is so true and it's different for everyone. 
And I think that building that relationship and having those moments, even where you've reached out to me and you're like, are you, what, what's going on? And I'm like, listen, I'm having a rough day. <laughs> this is going on. I think is important because then you can't misconstrue something. You can't misconstrue if someone doesn't call you back or doesn't text back right away. There's something going on and and you should be in constant communication is key. I think in any relationship, whether it's a marriage, whether it's a, a friendship or a business relationship, I really do think that there's definitely a line, but I like to do people that I have great connection with. And I 100% agree. For me, too, it isn't just building that connection. Like you touched upon, which I think was an amazing point of whether when you build that connection, you get to know if you like that person, especially in a business aspect of whether you agree with certain things or not, especially in a business environment that can be so important because When you look at companies and you go and work for them or you're employing individuals or you're looking to do partnerships, if they don't ethically align with what you deem ethical and you just go into business with them or hire someone or, you know, do anything that can really end up hurting you. So you know, reputation is always really important. And when you build those relationships and understand individuals on a different level of just, hey, you're walking in the door, let's sign a contract. It really helps to understand whether you align on certain things or you don't. And it cuts down some of that that nitty gritty you need. I joke that when I go into business with people, we become friends because at the end of the day, if I'm working so closely with you, I want to be able to call you up and be like, like I've done with you. Hey, you seemed a little off today. Are you good? You know, like if we're in town, you live in Florida. We've already talked about this. I go to Florida quite often. Okay. Hey, when I'm in town, you want to meet up, get dinner, talk. And it doesn't always have to be about business. And I think that's really important. If you own a business, whether it's service or you provide some form of service, even on a management level, or you're an employee, understanding when someone walks in the door, their needs, their wants, what they're looking for can really help either solidifying business or kind of ruining it right off the bat. And keeping your circle tight and everything you just said, I agree with. And keeping that circle, your nucleus of people, your tribe to know that, hey, you don't need 20 or 30 people. You might need a good five. If yeah. you've got, you know, five people, if you've got three people in your life that you can count on, you're doing good because in the world, there's very few people that later on in life, and as you get older, it's harder to meet those people. Uh, when you're younger, I mean, I have relationships with friends I've had for 30 years, but it's, it's, that takes work. It takes work to develop that and it takes trust and it takes a long time to, to develop that. But I, friends know me, I am definitely not the friend you can have on speakerphone because <laughs> I have no filter. I curse like a sailor. I have no apologies for it. It's who I am. So for me, someone's got to like that about me. If they don't, I don't know if we're going to work well together. <laughs> <laughs> and that to me is so important and a key aspect of what you brought up there really needs to be highlighted. Knowing who you are and not changing and not being apologetic for it. Now there's, granted, let me say this, there is definitely times where we might be a little out of character or react to something in the moment, um, let emotions get the better of us, where you step back and go, okay, maybe I shouldn't have said it or said it like that. Or, you know, let me kind of reevaluate this. We all have those moments. No one's perfect. But when you can be authentic and say, listen, you know, I don't have a filter. I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm thinking, whether you like it or not. This is who I am. This is how I approach situations. If you're not in, you're not in. But I cannot shift who I am for you because whether that's a working relationship, a spousal relationship, a friendship that doesn't work out in the long run. There's only so long you can hold that for. 
And there's only so long where then you start to become unhappy. That's right. I agree with that. You should be able to feel free and not feel like you're you're walking on eggshells or on your tiptoes to to talk to someone. It should be a fluid relationship. Good communication. If it feels right, it's right. If it feels wrong or you, you trust your gut, it's not right. And I think the important aspect of that as well is understanding, you know, these are my boundaries. This is what I'm trying to do because it can also be something as simple as you connect with someone, but don't say, this is what I need, or this is the kind of person I am. So if you don't understand that, then we're, we're potentially not going to get along. And sometimes what happens is that friction starts, but people don't know how to address it. And when that starts to happen, it just starts bubbling and bubbling until, you know, the pan overflows because no one decided to say, here's a red flag or, you know, I don't think what I'm communicating is really getting across the way I think it should get across. How do you approach those situations where sometimes you might be in that situation where you're feeling something's just off or you're not connecting with someone, whether it's in a business setting or personal? So that can go either way because we all know those people that whether they're friends or coworkers or whatever the case may be, we know what we can say to them and what they would deem, let's say, offensive instead of constructive. So I think there's a balance between if you have, I don't want to say an issue, but if there's something that crosses between you and another individual that doesn't sync up. I think it's very adult-like to communicate to that person. Hey, listen, when you said this, what did you mean? What did you mean by that? Like, I wouldn't, I would say I don't like to assume and I don't like when other people assume. That drives me. That's my pet peeve. Don't assume that something I've said or something that I've done is there to hurt or wrong you. Why don't you ask? And then we can understand and communicate. So I think that's a big Part of it. People assume that someone said something wrong about someone or to someone, or they get this 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 huge lack of miscommunication that's occurring that translates everywhere. Gossip, things you don't know what someone's thinking. So why don't you just pick up the phone and ask them? Mm -hmm. Who'd have thought? Right? Yeah. And it's very hard, and you see it more recently now with text, you know, social media. Sometimes, granted, we can all be in the moment and just be like, well, they just meant that. Like, you know, they want to say this, so they just said it. Mm -hmm. When in reality, it could be, okay, yeah, you're in the heat of a moment, but you need to take that step back and say, let me listen. Let me hear what you're saying. And that is why sometimes as a leader in any area, whether it's your personal life in a friend group or working professionally, you have to take the emotion out of it and say, okay, I might be emotional right now, but let me read it this way. Or even there's been times I've, you know, been reading text and I'll send it to someone else. One of my close friends, I know will keep it real with me. That's the thing. Other people have to hold you accountable as well. And you have to say, okay, sometimes I have to be held accountable, put myself in check or have someone else do it. And I've done that sometimes. Sometimes I've been like, okay, I can be overthinking this or I can be reading this wrong and I'll send it to someone I know will tell me whether I'm right, I'm wrong, I'm reading something incorrectly and I'll be like, how did you perceive this? And then whether it validates me and I'm like, okay, my response is going to be good, like valid or it's okay, I'm overreacting, tune it back, wait a little bit to respond and re calculate those thoughts. For you, how do you approach those situations? I think it's uncomfortable and in life, you have to get uncomfortable. So I'll give you a perfect example. A friend of mine reached out to me, I don't know, two weeks ago. And she said, we, because her and I had had a conversation and she said, you know what? 
what you said to me, I wanted to ask you before I assumed you meant this. So she was big enough to pick up the phone and say something I said triggered her in some kind of way, right? But once she gave me the opportunity for me to explain it, she's like, oh, I'm so glad I asked you and didn't assume. And I think being a real being a person in 2023 and really owning your crap is going, what did you mean by that? Was was is there something that I misconstrued? You have to ask. You can't assume anything. You just yes. can't. You have to ask and you've got to have people are too quick to go, oh my God, I don't want to deal with that person, and then just write them off. But really, they don't want to deal with themselves because they don't want to handle any situation. So they're deflecting instead of being the bigger person and going, you know what? I need to own up and communicate better. They're just going to pass it off on someone else. Like that person did something wrong and gaslight the situation. And it's just, it's, it's everywhere. (laughs) Unfortunately. And and that's the sad part is I feel like, and I've experienced this in my life. um, Sometimes those situations where you just kind of break down where others have broken down you know, put that wall up and either try to gaslight the situation or deflect it. And I'm sitting there going, you do realize we probably have a better relationship, get more in depth, get to know each other more and really enjoy each other. If instead of just ignoring the situation or the conversation altogether or, you know, trying to gaslight me to start a different argument to, you know, one of those things, we'd really get through it. It, it probably won't even be a conflict. And exactly. then we'd get through it and we can move forward. But I feel like you are you hit the nail on the head there of sometimes when people, especially in 2023, just don't want to have a conversation or don't know how to approach something. It turns into something much bigger. Instead of I'm going through a situation with a, a dear friend of mine I've had for several years and she assumed something and we're in this like not talking to each other phase but I've reached out a couple of times and it's like be the bigger person like just own up like why are people so resistant towards that why do people always want to assume that they are the ones that are correct and that other people are wrong it's called ownership and I think more than ever, especially in the world we're living in now, to effectively communicate and have any relationship with anyone, whether it's business, family, spousal, it doesn't matter. You have to learn how to effectively communicate with others to understand people and have that rapport so that you do create something great. And if you're not and you don't, there's no synergy, then you just move on. You just agree to disagree and say, you know what? We're not, we're not right for each other. We're not a good fit. Let's just Let's just go our separate ways. And it's okay. We part as friends. You don't have to get along with everybody or see eye to eye with everybody, but you can agree to disagree and not hate the person and not talk badly about that person. And I think that's really important to emphasize as well, especially in the business world. I always tell a story of you never know who you're talking to today, how they can affect your life in a positive or negative way down the road. So people ask me why for myself, it's always as long as I can control it to some extent, meaning, listen, if you've wronged me so badly, we are not going to say mutual like there's not that's been that trust has been broken. I don't have to go out and speak badly of you, but I'm not going to go to bat for you in the future either. Um, But for me, whether it's a friendship, a relationship a business relationship it when it ends because whether we like it or not not everything could be the same forever things change people change but at the end i've had people have asked me why do you stay in contact why on a birthday or a holiday might you reach out to that person why how can you be friends with an ex and i say because if we're in the same circle There doesn't need, especially if you're in the same circle, there doesn't need to be animosity. We don't have to walk into to a situation, whether if even if it's just running into each other at a 
at a restaurant because you live in the same town. I don't have to feel uncomfortable because I see you across the room. You shouldn't feel uncomfortable because you see me across the room. I can want the best for you without having you in my life. I can help you down the road if you need it without having you constantly in my life. But at the same note, I don't want you to turn around and say bad things about me when there's not really bad things to say. And I don't want to give you that reason. 100%. 100%. That's being the bigger person. I love that. I think that's great. It's so simple. We we figured out the world in, you know, 30 minutes. What's wrong I'm, with everyone else? <laughs> exactly. Like, come on, guys. No, I'm kidding. You know, everyone <laughs> has different perspectives um, and different outlooks on things. And that's one of the key things, I think, in understanding everyone. There's things that people are going through or experiences someone might have had that you will never know about. They might never talk about it. So when you start to understand that it's not just what you see, there might be other factors in play, it can really change your perspective on an individual and it can really change how you handle situations. So true. How do you kind of operate? You, As you said in the beginning of the show, you're a newer business. What is it like being a newer business and in that environment? Terrifying. <laughs> no, it, it, when you're used to working for other people your whole life and you take the plunge and you're like, you know what? It's all me. I depend on me. You have to really learn to believe in yourself. Because if you don't believe in yourself, you'll never be successful. You have to wake up every morning and go, I've got this. I trust in myself. I believe in myself. When no one believes in me, I've got to believe in myself. When you're low, you've got to flip the script and, and do some words of affirmation and get yourself out of a funk or and and or align with other people that can help lift you up that are in the same situation. And I think that's really important to understand is not everything's going to be an easy road. There's days that are harder than others. There's situations, especially as a business owner, you might understand how to approach. And there's times where you have to say, okay, I don't know this. I need to turn to someone I trust who will give me guidance on how to approach the situation. And it's also understanding that sometimes you need a team of people behind you that say, okay, this is how I you should be doing this. And that's why for me, Janine was the perfect hire to put work with because she understood where I was coming from. But also I knew that I could not do the sponsorships on my own. I understood that with everything else going on, A, I could not give it the attention it needed. And B, I did not know everything about that avenue. And there, there's room to grow there. And Janine has definitely helped me understand different things as we're going through processes. But I knew that she would take care of it, that, you know, you knew what you were doing, um, that I can rely on you to get the job done. And to me, that's really important in understanding that sometimes people, individuals look at that, whether it's in a business setting or personal when you're asking for help or you hire someone else on, as that's a failure. It's not. To me, I want everyone around me to be the smartest people in their area. You understand it. I'm going to rely on you. I might understand everything in a general sense. There might be things, the inner workings of different areas I understand more than others. Let me learn. But I have to say, as a business owner, especially to succeed, that I, A, you can't do everything on your own. There's not enough hours in the day. And B, that there are people that have expertise that you just don't have. So true, Olivia. I, I agree with you. I If I don't know something, I don't want to do it. I'd rather pay someone to do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I think in life, you have to learn to trust. You have to learn to trust that other people know what they're doing and they can get the job done too and have faith in other people. You know, you have to recognize what your strengths are and what, you know, I know what my weaknesses are. I know what my strengths are. I know what I just don't want to do and what I don't want to do. I'm going to pass off to another person who loves doing that. 
Mm-hmm. Janine, in your whole experience between podcasts and managing podcasters and other individuals, what has been the biggest learning experience that you've had so far where you've taken a step back and said, wow, that I really didn't understand. And now I have a whole new perspective. And how have you approached that situation? I think the technical aspect more than anything, I, there's a lot of different, there's StreamYard, there's Zoom, there's a, there's Squadcast. There's a lot of different platforms that technology kind of freaked me out in the beginning that I feel much more confident in, in 2023. I could, 10 years ago, I could barely turn on a computer. I mean, I was technologically challenged. And now I feel like, all right, this is my weakness. How can I make this my strength? How can I get good at doing this? And you just have to be patient with it, not get frustrated and learn slowly. And that is important in understanding and recognizing that something is your weakness and saying, okay, now I see that this is my weakness. I really understand. Let me put, you know, the work in to make it a strength and make it a positive. Janine, how can people get in touch with you if they would like to connect with you? They can go to StellaMix.com or info at StellaMix.com is my email address. And also you could go to Apple TV or Roku under Fight Mixer TV if you wanted to watch uh, our podcast. Awesome. Thank you, Janine Stella, for all of your insight today. You're so welcome. (laughs) A few of our key takeaways from today's conversation are what you do today can really help you succeed tomorrow. And it's sometimes not even realizing today can help you tomorrow as well as be authentic to yourself and know who you are and be unapologetic for that. As well as in life, you have to get uncomfortable. You have to take those moments of uncomfortability and say, yes, I recognize it. Now I'm gonna walk through it and come out the other side. And you never know what those moments will lead to. You know, once you do it a few times too, you can become very comfortable at something and really enjoy it. This was a great episode with our top-notch guest, Janine Stella. Thank you for listening and have a successful day.